Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode four of the New Music Podcast. On this episode, I had the pleasure of interviewing Nicole, the bass player of She He He, a punk band from Athens, Georgia. Unfortunately, however, my Wi-Fi was pure doo-doo while recording this episode, and some of the audio fades in and out throughout the episode. I do appreciate each and every one of you that are listening, and if you ever want to support the show, then please share it with your friends. I guess just to kind of jump right into it, I'd like to have the artists I have on introduce themselves. So can you tell the audience like your name, your pronouns, what instrument you play? Sure. My name's Nicole, and I uh, am the bassist in She He He. I go by she, her pronouns. Thank you for asking. It's nice to be able to say that and let people know. Um, but yeah, I'm the bass player. I was the singer for a long time and, and we had lineup change and played bass. And I've been a founding member of the band. So it's a really fun journey. And so how would you describe She He He's music um, to people who may be unfamiliar with the band? It's punk as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's it's not though, really. <laughs> we say that was let's just play some music and um, see how this turns out and a bit inspired by punk. It was kind of like past that era, really, of nineties, eighties punk. Uh, or even 70s punk uh, started in 2011 and I just think that it has like a lot of funness to it generally although some of the subject matter is you know delicate a lot of it's like about um, the relationship that my husband and I have a lot of it's nostalgic like we write songs about um, about like bands that we like and <laughs> that we've traveled with, you know, really like um, biographical in a lot of ways. So, you know, it's fun, but I think it's catchy and people, people always uh, come up to us and say that they just love energy of it all. So I would say we have great energy. Um, we started with like all shout at the same time, you know, 10 years ago. And it, it has evolved into more of a, like, there's harmonies now and uh, our instrumentation is evolved as well. <laughs> so y'all been around for, like you said, about 10 years now. And it seems mm -hmm. like, I don't know, like the average Athens band is what, like four years? I guess because it's a college town and people form a band when they're at like UGA and then they, people graduate and it breaks up. So y'all been around a lot like as a band a lot longer than it seems like an average band in Athens so I mean, maybe I'm wrong about that but I guess what's the secret to a band staying together that long um I think just staying involved with each other and and you know I think it has a lot to do with like gaining some traction too so we had um so we had like, so we gained, sorry, <laughs> got distracted. So I think it has a lot to do with gaining some traction. Like we had people that came out and really enjoyed our shows and that just made us want to play more shows and write more music and write more albums. And, um, you know, it might help that my husband and I are in the band together too. So it's always like, a, like, you know, <laughs> We sometimes that she he has kept us together at times um you know like it's it's like our project and noelle is also super involved and so now it's just the three of us and um we're we're all just motivated to keep playing and we're all living here still so there's no stress of trying to get a member to come in town to practice or uh, coordinating travel plans um, aside from just like normal touring stuff, which a lot of bands that like will separate it starts to get a little bit more challenging to book things. You know, it's possible. I know people that 
play in bands that don't live in the same town, but it's different. So what's it like um, making music with your husband? It's pretty fun. Um, we are the rhythm section and uh, his timing is better than mine. <laughs> So having been around as long as she has, how, what, what sort of changes have y'all seen in the Athens scene over the years? I was just thinking about that as, as we start to play shows again and um, see music again after this, you know, kind of pandemic break. Um, there's a lot of new bands coming out. A lot of people kind of, you know, practiced and formed some new stuff. And now that's coming out and it's cool to see what's new and what's coming out. And that's the thing that keeps us all inspired. I mean, I bet we'll write songs about this period of time too, <laughs> since we're so autobiographical sometimes. Um, but I like staying inspired by watching music. Um, then there is like an aspect of sometimes the shelf of bands in Athens, like you said, that bands are a little short lived here. Um, and that's kind of really cool also, because it's like this, you know, flaming comet that ends up coming out. But it's like, if you were there for those 15 shows, you know, or to see that, then it was really cool. And so that, that's another element that just keeps us inspired. Um, since, you know, now that the pandemic's lightening up and y'all are doing shows again and stuff, what sort of audience response have y'all gotten for the shows you've gotten that you've done recently? Is, how did it, is it any different than like how it was before the pandemic or people like seem to have like a new enthusiasm or? We haven't made a ton of new shows. Um, we have played some outside stuff, really super fun. Like we just played Porch Fest in Athens and that's like, there's a bunch of but play on different porches and it's an afternoon event there's like a different bands it said people at that event so people were excited to go do something you know um and you know like a ton of people showed up to our it was really fun and the like three or four hundred people awesome um you know, we've played some vaccine requirements, um, masking requirements again. One show that we played of a um, nice recording of it um, at the Nowhere Bar in Athens. It was like, you know, the CDC said, take your mask off. It's requirement show but it felt like an old like so the middle of summer hot screaming i think my internet spazzed out for a second there i live in like a really rural area so That's okay. it's a little sketchy sometimes you were you were um talking about the uh i think well my internet was spazzing out the like porch fest and stuff like that and this the, you know, how much people showed out. He said something about nowhere bar I called, but it was kind of spizzing out. Oh, yeah. So, he said, so yeah, like, yeah, we were playing. I'm sorry. Yeah. So we were playing um, nowhere bar this summer. And we, again, it like this went with, felt like the pandemic was kind of over and no one was wearing a mask per CDC recommendations for that moment in time. <laughs> and then we just, it was just a blast. It was like everybody was hot and sweaty and partying and um, it felt like old times. And it was sold out. So obviously people were excited. Um, so yeah, I, like we've had, it's just been different every time we've played a show. Um, and we have a couple things coming up. We're playing Fest in uh, Gainesville, Florida next week. And then we're kind of taking a break for a little while to do uh, some demos for a new record. Oh, um, wait, tell me something about that. Like, well, what's the new song sound like? 
the name of the album is Name Droppers. And I think, you know, traditionally we've been pretty fast in our music. Like people describe us as having high energy. And so that's still there, but I think we've taken it down a tiny bit um, to just explore, you know, some, some subtleties in um, finding a groove to finding more of a groove. Like it's still gonna make you jump around and dance and all of that stuff, but it might feel a little bit more groovy. What sort of musical inspirations have y'all drawn for this, um, for the new project? Well, we have one song called um, Elton John. <laughs> and it's, a, it's, it's like about thinking Elton John was about to die because that was, uh, he was like sick or something not a few years back it was like two years ago we wrote that song and um it's just called uh, or the 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 spirit of the song or the chorus of the song is my heroes are dying and we repeat that a lot so it's a, it's kind of about like listening to music old music new music whatever it is and feeling like really connected to it and um what it makes you feel inside when you when you hear that music and how some of your heroes are are passing on. So it's like every um, song they're going just going to have like a name of somebody, and that's that one's called Name Droppers. Yeah, most of the songs have a name of someone that's notable. <laughs> do, do you want to go ahead and like spoil it and tell us what the names you have? Yeah, that, that was the, that was the one secret. <laughs> that, that's the tease we get. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's the care going to. Um, do you have any idea of when you might release it? It will be in 2022. So we're going to record them in December. See how it goes from there. But it's completed. I mean, the idea, all the songs are written. So all we have to do is put it in its form, which sometimes takes a while. But so y'all have put out records like completely DIY before and like your last one was with a label or y'all going, which route are y'all going to try to go for this? We'll probably stick with uh, Fade 10, this upcoming re release. They've been good to us. Um, it's Sorry. Sorry, it's usually not this bad. Yeah, no, it's okay. I guess the clouds are not working today with us. <laughs> but you, you said you were going to stay with um, the same record label as last time, and then I think it kind of dropped after that. Yeah, we'll stick with Satan's if you have us. It's nice to have eyes on your record that that you're not solely in charge of getting people to notice you. So that's nice. And then, you know, people don't tell you, or maybe it's not common knowledge, but records take up a lot of space. So every time we order like 500 or a thousand records and they have to sit somewhere, <laughs> it's somewhere in our house, you know, we don't have a warehouse. So that takes up space. So what are, what are some other nuances of like doing a record completely DIY and then working with a label that y'all have noticed in, in, in y'all's experience? Well, I mean, at this period of time, there is not a ton of differences really. And it's more DIY than it ever has been. Like you can really hire people to help you with PR you can hire you can hire like your own team of everything and you can kind of make your own destiny on social media it just depends on how much you want to put into it um whether that's money or time or effort or whatever it is we we like you know letting people know that we're doing new stuff we like making records we like when people buy records but it's a balance of like, how much is that all that stuff going to take up like time wise in our life, you know, and um, like what's, what's worth it. So it, 
the answer is like, it's just, you know, you, you do it. You end up making it what it can be if you have like cool music with a label or without a label um but there are advantages obviously like with being on a label there's people that have more experience with ways to get your music in front of people um we have some folks that help us you know do radio station um a radio station campaign for instance so like when we are going to go on tour or when we are um releasing something new there's like a person that will help us send out stuff to college radio stations and hopefully they get played last year last summer when we released the last album we were in the top for a while it was really cool to be um there even if it's it's college radio, so it's totally, it's different than like the billboards. But, you know, we have words in our songs, and uh, none that are played on on <laughs> over the airways. But it's like, well, you know, are we ever going to make it onto the billboards? Maybe not. But it was fun to be on some kind of charts. <laughs> That's awesome that y'all were able to do that, though. So. How far outside of the Athens have y'all toured? Like, what's the spread that y'all have gone? Yeah, we stick to like a regional few circles usually, but there are moments where we go pretty far. Um, so we've been to Austin, Southwest, we've been to Chicago, we've been all the way down to South Florida, but you know regionally savannah columbia we go into north carolina we do we for a while we we're playing alabama a lot and um new orleans so it's like you know we try to kind of stay in the south east only because it's it's easy to play a lot of shows year round that way um and, and then we were kind of we kind of had some plans to do some things like in Europe and then the pa pandemic happened. So that's been put on pause, but I'm sure we'll get back to it at some point. So what was, um, how were y'all planning on Europe? Like where were y'all going to go? We were, we were thinking of um, Germany. That I'm sorry again. So those um, pre-pandemic Europe plans, what were they? You said and Germany. Whisper that we'd be, I guess, 2020. Anyway, it was everything a year. And some, it's just, it's hard to travel back and forth at this moment. So we're not planning on doing any European stuff at this moment, but maybe next year we're kind of taking it easy as this rolls on and um, taking the opportunity to play some outdoor shows when those arise. Um, I think it's pretty cool that there's like a lot more outdoor events personally uh, now. What's the feel of an outdoor show versus an indoor show for y'all? Well, it's different. It, you know, I think that a lot, uh, it depends. If it's a daytime show, I think people are a little reluctant to really get into dancing and jumping around like they would in a late night dark club setting, right? Um but we've played some things that are in the evening too. So, you know, it's just that you got more space, um, which makes people like excited to come out, I think. We've definitely had a lot of friends say like, oh, well, we haven't been back to seeing live music except for this one thing because it was outside and thank you. You know, we get a lot of thank yous for playing stuff like that. 
um, people still want inside late night shows. That's not going to go away. Uh, and I miss them also. So I'm happy they're happening in some capacity now. With she, he, um, it seems like even though um, Noel may be kind of like the main singer now, it seems like y'all like kind of split vocal duties depending on the song. So how do y'all decide like who's going to sing which song? It kind of works itself out, but Jason mainly writes the songs. So he starts with, um, with the, and the drum part, he'll write it on guitar, and then he'll share it with us. Um, this isn't for every song, but, but often he writes them. And then usually Noelle takes a, and she finds a cool harmony. And almost always that harmony becomes the main, the main song, the main vocal part. And then then has like the smooth between soft and harsh vocals that are, doesn't have to worry about, you know, having the main parts anymore. Then he kind of dances around with parts. And then so, so it kind of moves from Jason writing the song and the full melody. Then Noelle kind of takes it and does her thing with it. And then we both dance around what's happening there. And it's interesting, sometimes we don't want to let go of a certain part. So there is a little back and forth about vocal parts, but um, I like I think it's good that we can communicate about. Really since at one point there was much thought or treatment where we were just kind of every chorus gang vocals <laughs> with no harmonies um, or accidental harmonies. So now there's like a different with it, which I think is cool. Are you in any um, bands other than She He He? I am not. Nope. This is my only musical project. Um, it is plenty for me to have on my plate as a musician. Um, and I feel like personally, I would be real distracted if I was in a different band as well. I just, you know, I have other things I do in life and, um, yeah, what we practice twice a week. Then we usually do like a band meeting to get some, you know, other stuff accomplished. So it can end up being uh, many hours of, of fun work, but still kind of work throughout the week. So, no, I'm not in another band. Um, are you, are the other members of the band like split their time with other bands? They do. Um, Noel right now is, haven't played out yet, but they're practicing for, um, it's like a, they're, they're covering Nirvana. They're covering the Bleach album. There's a name. I don't know what it is. Uh, something clever, but, <laughs> but they haven't played out yet. So that's like a local to Athens band that's going to, to be like a party band for, for anyone that loves Nirvana. <laughs> <laughs> So, Fair you enough. know, we might do, we might end up doing some Nirvana covers out of that because Noel will know all of them. <laughs> and um, Jason is in a band called Vision Video, which is like a goth band. The, it used to be a video store in Athens, but now that it closed because video stores aren't really a thing. They held on really for a long time. It was wonderful place but anyway that closed and then a few years later they formed a band called vision video it's like goth dance music in the vein of the cure joy division stuff like that so and he plays drums in that band gotcha with the, the athens scene do you is it pretty like all-inclusive and like every type of genre of band will play together or is it seem or is it there's like kind of like niches of 
like different pockets. Like this genre would generally be this group of people that play group of bands that play together. Uh, how much is there crossover when it, people like do sets together and whatnot? I think it just depends on the show. I definitely think there there has been a lot of intentions of having bills that have a variety of music on it, like it, and that being very intentional and and that's awesome. And then I think that sometimes you're friends with people that are just playing different kinds of music than you play and you're like, we should just do a show together. So it's like unintentional, you know, in, in a fun way. And same with the crowd, you know, like somebody that might be really into the Grateful Dead will also show up to our shows and, and dig it. So, um, and I love that about Athens. It's like people just kind of enjoy music more so than get stuck in their shot of music. You know, like people always have things they gravitate to, like when you put music on when you're at home. But when you're watching live music, there's an opportunity, especially in Athens, to check out all the bands that night or um, maybe even go to a couple different shows and see what's happening on a Friday night. And, and you might see like a really wide variety of things happening. Is it um, pretty much the same with when y'all like tour in places other than Athens or how, what type of sets do y'all do get put on a lot of times when you tour? Um, I, you know, it, it also depends, but I feel like it, it, it depends. Like the thing we're going to play next week the fest that is mostly punk punk bands like specifically pop punk bands so maybe in the vein of like the descendants or bad religion or hot water music or something like that um so when we are out of town and people learn that we play that event sometimes or they you know read through our bio then they some promoters will definitely just try to stick us with bands and stuff like that and that's awesome because then you get to meet like the people in the town that are doing that kind of stuff and their fans come I really like us so in some ways that's really fun but we do love you know watching and kinds of music so we're really open to um to playing like pop punk events yeah, aren't you, after the, the um y'all play that fest, aren't you like doing a show at Valdosta too? We are. We're playing the Valdosta DIY house. Y'all played there a Which few times cool. now, haven't you? Yeah, we've played there once before, and it was before fest two years ago, and I. So you were um, saying about the about Asta yeah, the, the DIY, the house. DIY house in Valdosta is pretty cool. The last time we played was two years ago, and it was right before Fest, and um, it was packed full of people. Everybody was real excited, and it's just nice to see a DIY space thriving like that. And so, um, yeah, I wasn't sure if it was still around, but it, it is full steam ahead, I guess, having shows and taking good precautions. But yeah, they're doing it. Yeah, like I moved back to South Georgia um, in the past a few months ago. So I'm not too far from there. So if I don't have Take to work that day, hopefully off. I'll make it out to see y'all. <laughs> I haven't been to the DIY house, but like I've been mean, meaning to go for a yeah, long time, yeah. and like pandemic happened. Yeah, come on up. I mean, it's free. There's no <laughs> entrance. Take the day off and come up. Where are you in? Where Where are you in Georgia? So I'm like, like a toward the southwest corner now. I I wasn't. I lived in Athens um for a couple like the past two years because I went to UGA, but now I'm back in South Georgia. So from a really tiny town called Pelham that basically people stop for gas and that's it. Like there's people's like high schools are bigger than the town I live in now. 
Would you believe that I've been to Pelham before? Are you serious? Yeah, I have. My friend Jay lives there. He grew up there at his grandma's house in Pelham, Georgia. <laughs> I saw the big totem pole where it's like, you're like 3,000 miles from China or Tokyo or whatever. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. I never expected to have someone to know. <laughs> and you, you broke up for a little bit. Who, would you, who were you saying that had a grandma here? His name is Jay Solomon. Gotcha. Yeah. I live over awesome. in Savannah now. Gotcha. <laughs> so have you ever played the, have y'all played the DIY house in Athens, Bombs Away? Oh, we, let's see, I saw shows there when it was downtown, and now I'm not aware that it exists right now. Does it, is there a space that it exists? Yeah, it's not downtown, but it's like, I don't know, probably like a mile outside of downtown. Uh, cool. I don't know if they've done any shows since the pandemic. They were planning on one that about a month ago, but I think the person who they were going to have do it canceled. So I don't know how they are with shows right now, but it exists. And I think they're, I guess, willing to do stuff still. Yeah. So that's cool. I didn't know that they hadn't, like, I knew that they closed their, they, they, they were like underneath a coffee shop. They were underneath Jittery Joe's in this cool little spot downtown and then that pitch to record store it's like a metal like record store right babies yeah and then so i didn't know that but i just was so that's didn't know about that yeah they're just like in a house now mm -hmm. they, there was a bunch of cool shows that they did before before the world ended but i guess they're starting <laughs> it back i don't think they've done any shows but they were planning on it. So I don't know. You can contact them or set something up. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Cool. <laughs> yeah, so um, have y'all played other like DIY houses? And I was, if so, I was going to ask how that compares to playing like a traditional like club venue. Yeah, it just depends on what, what you're, you know, who's setting it up. I grew up in South Florida and we did like DIY shows there a lot warehouse spaces and stuff and you know it depends like is it a show where you're going to be raising money for the bands that are traveling or is it a free show and so like if it's the one where you're trying to get money for the bands then you have to like set up some kind of station for there to be donations at the front door you know you just have to think about every aspect whereas if you're playing in a club you don't really have to think about all of that stuff that much um and then back in the day like when i was younger and um just going you would fly there and you would like tell everybody about this upcoming show and everybody would be excited about it it feels different now with social media but you still i guess you just fly her online now you know you're just telling all your friends on whatever you're on that this thing's coming up and you know, in general, I feel like she just continues on with those kind of DIY ethics just because we know how to do, so we know how to do it ourselves. <laughs> um, if somebody wants to help us and like taking things off our plate, we are so stoked for that <laughs> but we often you know just we're like okay well we'll just do it like and then you research how to do it and figure all that out gotcha well that's about um everything i had i guess to ask so thank you so much for coming on so yeah. um well, the last thing i like to ask everybody though i guess i almost forgot um like what's the but the thing I like to end with is what's a band or artist in your local scene that you want to spotlight and you think needs more attention? Well, that's a good question. I really enjoy our friends in 
Hunger Anthem. So Hunger Anthem is a three piece. It sounds similar to, well, you know, some defining qualities are like, um, it sounds a little grungy. Um, the bassist and guitarist trade off vocals some. There's like, there's catchy choruses that I enjoy singing that kind of are a little bit of earworms, you know? But it's not, it's not like formulaic in that way that you're like, oh, well, this is, you know, just like this. It's very unique and cool. And it gives me chills when I see them live. And so I had gotten to see them over the summer for the first time in two years. And it was so awesome. So Hunger Anthem, I would say, check them out. Gotcha. And so um, where can people find your music uh, in... Anything that you want to plug on the way out? Yeah, we're on Bandcamp. We have a web store. You can find all of that through our website at shehehebandcom or just follow us on Instagram. All of that jazz. Um, we had some tie dye shirts recently up on the web store. They're just homemade DIY style <laughs> tie dye bleach spotted t-shirts um but yeah just check out our music and come, come to a show say hi all right thank you so much for taking the time to do this best of luck with everything hope the fest goes well and all that cool thanks Jaden. um hope you get to make it out to the diy house in valdosta Hope so. Bye. For posterity's sake, this episode was recorded on October 22nd, 2021. Remember, kiddos, whenever you're recording something, you should always figure out when it was and what date and put that in it so that if it ever comes to archive work, anywhere in the future, people will know when it was actually made.